Hey guys, Eclipse 14 here, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy. Alright, I am in front of the ice cave, and I'm just gonna dive right in. For all intents and purposes, I consider this to be the hardest part of the entire game, mainly because every single enemy encounter has their own independent issues. On the plus side, it's a relatively short dungeon, but it tries to make itself longer on purpose. Good luck, you're gonna need it. I certainly am. So, we have this long, wide passage east to begin things, and right down there are some stairs. Seven wizards to begin things. Let's just say the inability to run from these guys is the least of this dungeon's problems. Even then, that's only because of the fact that they were coded to be inescapable since they guarded the crown of the marsh cave. As you can see, they still do some decent damage to anybody that's not a fighter, but uh, by this point we've got much more HP and better weaponry to deal with them. Edge took over 100 HP though. Jesus. I gave the gold burst at the teal, didn't I? I should probably move that and just give him a silver and be done with it. Yeah, I'll have to do that later. Wait, no, 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 just run Zeus Gauntlet. Well, that one's out of the picture. 44 takes that one out, and 40. Alright, done. Yeah, because of that heavy damage, I'm just gonna switch the armor. I should've figured this. Edge gets hit more often than Teal does. Well, I'll let it be. And just move on through this featureless room all the way to the end, go down, and then left. What's this? Four cockatrices and a mummy. Okay, uh, obviously petrification is a problem. Do I want to do... No. Four of them suck as is. Hmm, with all the misses, maybe that would have worked out. Oh well, not gonna bother. The path to the south you see there leads to just a blocked passage, so don't worry about it, take the stairs to B2. This is also a rather featureless room, with literally the only feature being some rocks blocking the western path a little bit. But either way, you can still take that path and then go south, or go south and then west. Either way, you need to reach the southwestern corner. I'll go this way. Very bland, featureless room. And nothing else. Except encounters, obviously. Wraiths. These guys are effectively much stronger images, and are more than capable of surviving a harm, too. And in my case, I am going to run a Zeus Gauntlet, which they are likely to survive, provided it doesn't roll high enough. But I don't see a reason to use Fire 2 here. I'd rather save that for more important garbage. 102... 94, 102, 110. Even 110 doesn't kill them. I think they have 114. And they're obsessed. Did his job. Oh, and yeah, they also hit incredibly hard compared to other undead. Zeus so Gauntlet. Should actually finish them off. Like, it did plenty of damage. Yep. And that's a wrap. Not too bad. But you do gotta be careful about them. Alright, continue on west. What's this? Speaking of images... More often than not, they do show up with wraiths, so consider yourself lucky if it's just images. Uh, honestly, that might be the easiest encounter of them all. That or the wizards, take your pick. Uh, okay then. That's a whole lot. 
but the focus will obviously be on the wraiths because they're more likely to get killed by the Zeus. <clears throat> the images are more likely to get killed by the Zeus Colin, excuse me, than the wraiths, which is why everybody's targeting the wraiths. That would have probably taken out a wraith. Okay, one survived. Two. Okay, four of them were taken down, which is not bad, in all honesty. The others just have to hit their targets. Really? One hit from Zest? Wow. At least Edge got his job done. No paralysis at all, though. That's actually kind of surprising. Either way, Zeus Gauntlet again. I know that one was going down. The other one took only 37. Okay, that one's out too. One down. That's that. <clears throat> Alright, that one worked out nicely, especially since no paralysis happened this time. Even still, Edge and Teal are taking some heavy hits. Okay, I did make sure that was done. A couple heal potions, I want to make sure Edge is over 200. As for Teal, get him to write that. I can probably run with that. Anyway, stairs to B3. And welcome to the very smallest map of the entire game. Seriously, what the hell's the point in this thing? In all honesty, it just serves as an extension to get to here. Which has this big room. And we need to wrap all the way around it in order to get to the door. There's the door. And... Uh-oh. Oh, boy. There are two of them, so I might be able to pull it off. But if you see three of them, you might want to fail. These guys, while you can run from them compared to their wizard counterpart, they are notorious as the only enemy in the game that inflicts instant death with their three hits. And if it doesn't work, it's just scratch damage anyway. Yeah, not exactly pretty. On the other hand, they also have Trance, which is paralysis on all your party members, which, in all honesty, if you're looking more for paralysis than whatever they may have, you know things are very fucked up. They don't have much health, but they do have some magic resistance, so... I see no reason to actually run magic here. I just gotta be very cautious. And pray that they go for Trance, and if they don't, then... Critical hit for 2 damage. That's their critical, is 2 damage. Okay, at least one's down. And so is the other one. Well, um... That worked out. But yeah, you face them at your own risk, because even a ribbon, which has protection against every element in the game, can't even save you from their instant death. Which is why they're so notorious. Anyway, inside here are three chests. The center chest, which is covered in pitfalls, is actually our goal. The left chest is actually what we want right now. So let's head up there. And inside here is the flame sword. Now, it is slightly weaker than the ice sword damage-wise, though if properties work the way it should have, then this would have been nice to use in this place. Though I am actually going to electively use the downgrade just to have something different happen instead of just running the ice sword. Plus make it look like it seems legitimate. Also, should I move that heal staff? Yeah, I honestly, let me move the heal staff to, like, teal or something. Mainly because, uh, Edge is mostly doing damage and teals. I mainly thought of using Edge as the, uh, healer since teal was, uh, using magic damage. Anyway, so yeah, there's that chest. The one on the right is the only one in the entire game that I honestly voluntarily skip. 
because inside is just a cloth. As if that's not disrespectful enough, it's also trapped by a very deadly mage encounter, which more often than not will ambush you and hit very hard, but if they decide to not hit hard, they will cast Rub to start things off. If you somehow survive that, then they just blast you with Fire 3. In addition to more spells. Good luck! You're gonna need it. <laughs> Those guys are awful. So, skip the chest, go down the pitfall, and no matter which one you take, you'll always end up in the same room. One step down, it's a trap with, in this case, this stuff. Spectres and Geist can show up as well. Either way, it's a whole bunch of undead and a perfect nuke for Fire 2. Though, do I want to... Well, there's four wraiths, and you know what, I... I'm not going to. I can still run the Zeus Gauntlet. I don't care. Let my Fire 2 be used for something more important. Teal is at 8 HP. Oh boy. The only thing I can hope for is that nobody else goes for him. And if it does, hopefully it misses. Sounds like it should have ran the fire too. Well, as long as a few of them go down, I'll be fine. Yay. Yeah, this does not look good. Now, focus on the Wraith. Uh, I'll run the Zeus Gauntlet. And... just heal staff. Doesn't seem like much, especially with Wraiths in tow, but if I can take the Wraiths out... Besides, everybody else will get slight healing. Zest caps out, since he, like, lost 10. It's not a lot, but it all works out. A20 is not too bad for a basic heal. Alright, the wraiths are down. This has to take out the images. Unless they roll that complete ass again. Good. Should I ran fire 2? Maybe, but I've only got 5 charges and there's still plenty of dungeon to go. What isn't going to be denied is using these to get them back up. That's sure fire. Alright, so I'm out of heal potions, which means I have to rely on cures from this point onward. Not that that's a bad thing. If I really need to heal, I've got heal too. Anyway, so this first one, I'm going to do the same as I did the Marsh Cave, and just go straight for the chest that is our target. Mainly because I do not want to be down here very long. Mainly because this is one of the encounters, and it's much more common than in B2. I faced them once, that's good enough for me. Second turn is actually not bad. Alright, run down. We need to go this way, again, skipping the two rooms, even though they are pretty decent. They are trapped by some... One's nasty, the other one I've actually faced before. Peninsula of Power. So anyway, there's this chest here, in this floor. What's weird is that this is actually B1, and we were in B3 previously. Very weird. There's only three of these guys. Um... I... I'll attempt this one. I will need the Zeus Gauntlet, and you know what, just run Kill Staff. Hello, any day now. If anything, this is... fine. I mean, honestly, Teal is probably not going to be doing much anyway. Okay, all the petrification did not work. That is nice to say. I am also at approaching 15 minutes, which is nice. One of the cockatrices survived. The 
mummies both went down there, which is nice to see. That was Zest's target, which means that's all wrapped up. Alright. Can't argue with that, in all honesty. That's a heal potion, which actually recovers one of them. And do I really need it right now? Not really, honestly. We'll move on down here. Oh, what's this? Triple wizard? Eh, big deal. I don't even need a zoo scholar for this. Though, one of them might survive, depending on Flow and Teal attacking. Yep, definitely necessary. It's somehow he did more damage than Flow. Wow. I mean, it was a critical, but still. Okay, then. That finishes that up. And this chest contains 10,000 gil. Sweet stuff. Alright, so we'll roll on this way. And now we need to go into this room, which has three chests and a single pitfall. That pitfall actually leads to the chest we're looking for. Before we do that, there's some chests to deal with. The left is 9,500 gil. Alright, it'll be put to use eventually. A tent, which is nice. I think the right one's actually trapped. Let me use that one heal potion on edge. No, it's not. The ice shield. Which actually is nice, because it's effectively the reverse of the flame shield. And in all actuality, I'm going to be equipping said ice shield, as it protects against fire. And plus, there's no reason to have flame and flame, because both resist ice. So doing flame and ice resists both elements. The flame shield will still be used, though. It's got its use. Alright, so let's head down. And that brings us here. The chest is trapped by what is the guardian of this place. So... In all honesty, let me go ahead and... Yeah, honestly... Well, I mean, I gotta do a second run through here anyway. So, let's just run it like that. And hope this works out. This is the eye, or evil eyes, it would be in later versions. This is actually a different appearance, because the original Famicom version looked like this. Very different from what you're expecting, isn't it? That's mainly because, if you know Final Fantasy in the way that you should, it's largely just a huge ripoff of Dungeons and & Dragons, and the eye looks like the Beholder. Unfortunately, the ones that cover Dungeons and Dragons are notoriously infamous to protecting their trademarks on the level of Disney, so the original Famicom version is the only one that has the eye as that appearance. Starting with the MSX version, which got released before the North American Nintendo version, which is what I'm doing, it got changed to this design and has retained that throughout all regions ever since. Anyway, the eye itself isn't too hard, but most notoriously, it will cast four X's, which is actually a censored version of Kill. And if you heard me talk about stun when I was discussing level 6 magic, it is one of the power word spells, which means you gotta be over 300 HP in order to survive. You better hope it hits your fire. Anyway, beyond that, it's not that tough. Though, that isn't going to escape the fact that I should probably run... Do I want to run... What the hell? I'll do ice. Ineffective. It's got a couple other nasty spells, but kill is the one that is most notorious. And beyond that... Yeah, it's a joke. And with that... 806 experience and 3,225 gil. That's actually quite a bit for a trap spot, which in a sense actually makes this very spot 
the best grinding spot in the entire game. Were it not for one problem. It's in the fucking ice cave. And you gotta go out of your way to get to it. Anyway, what's in the chest? That would be the floater, which is what we need to power the airship. So now, our actual ship will only have one final voyage. Sad noises, but it is what it is. I am approaching 20 and a half minutes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop down since I have to anyway. And we'll go through the second round of the ice cave with the next episode. I'm going to actually wrap this up by clearing the trap here. Which is too Im Actually, this isn't too bad. And I, eh, I'll run the Zeus Gauntlet anyway. And with any luck, I'll get through this without trouble. I just have to be careful with the next episode. And hopefully nothing bad shows up. Um, the main thing I gotta worry about, obviously, is the sorcerers, but mages are also relatively... Um... They're not common-common, but you gotta be very watchful for them. So with any luck, I won't face them. It's a high risk here since I can't save, but if I can pull a miracle out my ass with the next episode, then I can call the whole thing a complete success. So, yeah, um, that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the episode here, and we'll finish up the ice cave hopefully next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.